Today I'm going to read the tale about the Frog King or Iron Henry by Brothers Grimm. Once upon a time there was a princess who went out in the forest and sat down at the edge of a cool well. She had a golden bow that was her favorite plating. She threw it up high and caught it in the air and was delighted by all this. She threw. Yes, one time the bow fell up very high, flew up very high, and as she stretched out her hands and bent her fingers to catch again, to catch it again, the bow hit the ground near her and rolled and rolled until it fell right into the water. That is the water whale. The princess was horrified and when she went to look for the bow, she found the well was so deep that she couldn't see the bottom. So she began to weep miserably and to lament. Oh, if I only had my bow again, I'd give anything, my clothes, my jewels, my pearls and anything else in the world to get my bow back. <clears throat> As she sat there grieving, a frog stuck its head out of the water and said, Why are you weeping so miserably? Quack. Oh, she said, you nasty frog, you can't help me. My golden bow has fallen into the water. Hmm, well, I don't want your pearls or jewels or your clothes, the frog responded, but if you will accept me as your companion and let me sit next to you and let me eat from your little golden plate and sleep into your little bed and promise to love and cherish me, I will fetch you bowl, I will fetch your bowl for you. The princess thought, what nonsense the simple-minded frog is blabbering. He's got to remain in his water, but perhaps he can get me my bowl. So, I'll say yes to him. And she said, yes, fair enough, but first fetch me the golden bowl. I promise you everything. The frog, the frog dip, dipped in his head beneath the water and dived down. <clears throat> it didn't take too long before he came back to the surface with the bow in his mouth. He threw it onto the ground and when the princess caught sight of the bow again, she quickly ran over to it, picked it up and was so delighted to have the bow in her hands again that she thought of nothing else but to rush back home with it. The frog called after her, wait, quack, princess, take me with you, the way you promised. But she didn't pay any attention to him. The next day, the princess sat at the table and heard something coming up the marble, the marble steps. Slip, 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 slip. Soon, <laughs> thereafter, it knocked at the door and cried out, Princess, quack, youngest daughter, open up. <laughs> she ran to the door and opened it, and there was the frog whom she had forgotten. Horrified, she quickly slum slammed the door shut and sat down back at the table. But the king saw that her heart was humping and said, What are you afraid, daughter? There's a nasty frog outside, she replied. He retrieved my golden bow from the water and I promised him that he could be my companion, but I never believed at all he could get out of the water. Now he's standing outside in front of the door and want to come inside. As she said this, there was a knock at the door and the frog cried out, Princess, youngest daughter, open up. Don't you remember what you said? Down by the well's cool water. Princess, youngest daughter, open up. 
The king said, You must keep your promise, no matter what you said. Go and open the door for the frog. She obeyed, and the frog hopped inside and followed her at her heels until they came to her chair, and when she sat down again, he cried out, Let, uh, Lift me up to the chair beside you. The princess didn't want to do this, but the king ordered her to do it. When the frog was up at the table, he said, Now push your little golden plate near to me so I can, so we can eat together. The princess had to do this as well, and after he did, she had eaten until he was full, he said, Now I am tired and want to sleep. Bring me upstairs to your little room. Get your little bed ready so that we can lie down in it. Wow! <laughs> Persistent frog. That's not from the tale. The princess became terrified when she heard this, for she was afraid of the cold frog. She didn't dare to touch him, and now he was to lie with in her bed next to her. She began to weep and didn't want to comply with his wishes at all. But the king became angry and ordered her to do what she had promised, or she'll be held in disgrace. Nothing helped. She had to do what her father wanted, but she was bitterly angry in her heart. So, she picked up the frog with two fingers, carried him upstairs, into her room, lay down in the bed, and instead of setting him down next to her, she threw him crash against the wall. Now you will leave me in peace, you nasty frog, said the princess. But the frog didn't fall down dead. Instead, when he fell down on the bed, he became a handsome young prince. Well, now indeed, he did became her dear companion, and she cherished him as he had promised and in their delight, they fell asleep together. The next morning, a splendid coach arrived drowned by eight horses with fetchers and glistening gold harnesses. Harnesses, yes. The princess, fightful Henry, accompanied them. That is the prince or the former frog. He had been so distressed when he did learn his master had been turned into a frog that he had ordered three iron bonds to be wrapped around his heart to keep it from bursting from grief. When the prince got into the coach with the princess, his faithful servant took his place at the back so they could return to the princess's realm. And after they had traveled some distance, the prince heard a loud cracking noise behind him. So he turned around and cried out, Henry, the coach is breaking. No, my lord, it's really nothing but the band around my heart, which nearly came apart when you turned, it, turned into a frog and your fortune fell. And you were made to live in that dreadful well. That is from previous fairy tale. Hmm. Two more times the prince heard the cracking noise and thought the coach was breaking, but the noise was only the sound of the bands springing from fightful Henry's heart, because his master had been released from the spell and was happy. And that is the tale, the fairy tale about the frog king or Iron Henry or how the frog became a prince. Uh, now maybe the, the last stage was when he fell on the bed. Then he turned into a prince. Well, this is for today. Next uh, reading in a few days.